Welcome back guys to another episode of Decentralized Chain. It's Feroza bringing you the latest news, reviews and blockchain tech. I know it's been a while since I've posted. My apologies, I've been traveling, but now I am back. I'll be able to start getting out some more daily content for you. And today we are going to kick off with an exclusive interview with Teller.io. Now, Teller.io is looking to bring decentralized oracles to decentralized finance. So we're talking at a project that was initially built for the derivatives market, so futures contracts, options, but also now there are applications for insurance settlements and synthetic stocks. Now, if none of this really makes sense to you, that's okay. We're going to be sitting down with the co-founder, Brenda Lawyer, and we're going to talk about all of it. We're going to talk about what Brenda does outside of crypto, how Brenda got into crypto, why Teller is around, why it makes it better than some of the competition that's already out there in this space. And more interestingly enough, they already have a finished product more or less. It's going to be ready to launch by the end of summer. And the bit that's really got everyone buzzing is that it is also a Binance Labs incubated project. And we're going to find out a bit more exactly what it means to be that type of project and what type of support that you get when you're underneath that incubation program. So enough of me talking. Let's jump right in and speak to Brenda ourselves. Right. So Brenda, welcome to the show. Happy to have you here as always. And, uh, you know, before we actually go straight into the project, I want to know a little bit about you. Who are you, Brenda? What do you do when you're not wearing that T-shirt? <laughs> So um, I'm an economist by training, but in general, outside of uh, work, uh, what I really enjoy doing is, uh, or things that get me in the zone is hiking. I really enjoy hiking. I've done the hike from uh, France to Spain, and I love it. Oh, wow. Um, and I also like to paint in acrylic. Um, not any good at it, but I just <laughs> love to do it. It's, <laughs> so, it's always good to have a hobby. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and I definitely love tech. Like I actually code. Like it's actually fun. It makes me, it get, it gets me in the zone, just like painting does. Okay, is, okay. But oh, I love it. These these uh, these, these geeks. <laughs> <laughs> only joking, only joking. Well, look, thank you. Thank I was you. just thinking, I'm so normal. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. We're, I th I, th I think we're cut from the same cloth. I just I just, I just don't admit it that much. That's all. <laughs> right. So look, um, Brenda. Once again, thank you for coming on the show. Um, Teller, we've, for having me. I've, I've, I've heard a lot about it, um, but rather than me talking about it, I thought, why not get the uh, co-founder of Teller on the show and tell us all about it, mind the pun. So, I mean, wh what is it you guys are looking to build up? What, what is Teller exactly? So Teller is a decentralized oracle for decentralized finance. <clears throat> and we set out to actually build this because we were actually building a derivatives protocol. And we built it out, we went on mainnet, but it was super difficult to get users on board because you know we kept hearing the same, our derivatives, you need a price point and for that price point determines who wins and who loses. Mm -hmm. And if that's centralized, then it's, it's the weakest point of your derivatives and you can't really sell an unstoppable application or uh, this fully decentralized derivative if you have a centralized point um, that, that actually determines who wins and who loses. Mm -hmm. So it was really hard. And there was nothing out there that we could use. So we thought, well, we're just going to build something for okay. ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we started building it and it turned into its own monster, I guess now. <laughs> uh, but it, I mean, we we really enjoyed it and it's really needed in the space. We realized it's not mm -hmm. just us that we needed this. So um, we, that's how we ended up with Binance and we ended up here now. But mm -hmm. that's basically what we're trying to use. Do something an oracle that we can use right now with technology that we know works right now. Um, we're t you know, DeFi is ready to grow, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's it's gonna need an oracle that is decentralized. Okay, so let, I'm I'm gonna ask the obvious question, right? I mean, you, you've yeah. you've touched on decentralized, and you know, blockchain is all about being decentralized, and every other project has yeah. decentralized. I mean, does what you're doing in terms of making it decentralized make it any better? So decentralization in general, it makes it, it, it doesn't make everything better. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of things that the traditional system does quite efficiently, but it does provide us a way to create unstoppable applications. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you just if you want something super fast and super efficient, uh, there's databases for that. We mm -hmm. already have that yep. type of system. If you want something that it's unstoppable, then that's what blockchains enable. And if you're building a product on a blockchain mm -hmm. that is, you know, that, 
that is just trying to make the traditional system. To me, it makes not that much sense. It makes more sense to create things that, you know, once they're out there, they're out there, people can use them and they're mm -hmm. truly decentralized and truly available to the to the majority of people. Okay. So like most things decentralized, there's always a consensus mechanism behind it in order to kind of validate it all. I mean, I yours is kind of like a proof of work where plus miners need to stake. Do, do you want to just tell me a little bit more about that? It's kind of high level, I suppose, more than anything else. Everyone's really interested. They can look at your white paper, but uh, you know, for, yeah. for those of us who are just trying to kind of pick it out, what's what's your mechanism? What I mean, what what makes your mechanism unique, or is it unique? Or maybe might have you you might be using something else already out there. So, yeah. Well, it is it is sort of a hybrid. Uh, we use so, you know, there's the proof of work aspect mm -hmm. and the the staking apps aspect of it, and that's because the proof of work. You know, it just provides that randomness that we need to really, truly, to reach a consensus. Mm -hmm. And then the staking portion of it, because all of our miners need to be staked, um, it allows uh, the system to be able to, I guess, punish malicious actors. Mm -hmm. And the way that it basically works is um, um, when a user comes and requests data, Teller will actually uh, take the request with the highest payout. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to be given to the miners to go and mine. And they'll go and solve a proof of work and provide the value or the data, the request that was uh, requested along with it. We take the first five to come in. So then they're racing, right? Okay. But of the first five to come in, the actual official value is the median of those five. Mm -hmm. So it makes it a lot harder to break because now you have to do three. Uh, you have to break three instead of just one if it was just, just a regular consensus mechanism. A, a regular P POW. Mm -hmm. But then any of these values that are um, submitted can mm -hmm. actually be disputed. Okay. And it then it will go to a, a vote of Teller token holders where, and they can determine whether or not the miner was malicious and then they can stake their, their they can slash their stake. Okay. And that's really important because that really brings a lot of the security to the yep. system. Because every if you're if you're trying to cheat the system but you're being staked every time, it makes it extremely expensive to break okay. the system, especially you know over time. And hence, you get punished as well in terms of losing that stake as well as part of that. Right, and the stake, uh, whoever actually uh, be begins the dispute, mm -hmm. they get that that stake. Okay, so that's, okay. You know, an incentive for them to mm -hmm. to want to do it. On the other hand, if the miner is wrongly accused, they get that fee. Okay. So it's sort of you know. It, we, we thought a lot about the incentives, but that's how it works. And that's, you know, why we need both pieces. One, uh, we know proof of work works for randomization mm -hmm. and staking really works to uh, provide the correct incentives. Okay. So I know earlier on you mentioned around DeFi and sort of speed, uh, the speed right. element, right? So interestingly enough, and I was kind of, re I, I, I forgot where I picked it up and I think I might have seen it in one of your Telegram channels. But it was, I thought it was a pretty interesting question where somebody asked, um, I think every every 10 minutes, there's potentially a new challenge that miners need to solve. But then you've obviously mentioned real-time data, API, and having having that data at your fingertips. How does that really come into play from a real-time data aspect? And then you've got this kind of 10-minute delay as well to validate and, you know, ultimately, well, it is what it is, right, to validate that actual challenge. So how do you solve that challenge? Yeah, so... Uh, we only assign a challenge every 10 minutes or, you know, that's, uh, we adjust the difficulty mm -hmm. it's longer or shorter, but basically we are trying to provide a solution for our customers that is secure. So mm -hmm. we're not focusing so much on, on speed as we are in security okay. and it's definitely limiting. Um, there are a few solutions out there, um, but uh, we feel that, you know, because we're targeting the DeFi market, if mm -hmm. you look at futures or, you know, just derivatives, you for you to settle those types of contracts, you just need a starting price and an end price. Okay. And for that, you don't really need, you know, to do any type of algorithmic trade or, or anything too fast mm -hmm. on chain. And, you know, even, you know, for Ethereum, um, adding a block takes 10 seconds. For Bitcoin, it takes 10 minutes. Scalability is not solved yet. Mm -hmm. And... If you really just want to do algorithmic trading um, on either of these chains, mm -hmm. it's just not going to work. Okay. Uh, but there's other things that it truly does bring efficiencies to, like, you know, those things, mm -hmm. uh, those derivatives products, futures, even synthetic stocks. 
you know, you need a starting price and, and then you just need an end price. Okay. And, and you don't need to have, you know, that speed that we have in traditional databases. Okay. Um, so we, we do see it as, um, you know, that, that's our focus. Mm-hmm. Our focus is mainly for DeFi. Uh, one of the things that could be done is like if, if you want to take an optimistic approach where you're willing to have your smart contract execute on relying on a centralized mm-hmm. party, then you can do a fallback to Teller to be a dispute mechanism. Okay. Um, so that's how we've, you know, we know where we stand in, in terms of the type of security that we want to provide. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're at derivatives protocol and you have $10 million uh, running on your, um, on your contract or mm-hmm. on your derivative, maybe you are okay with waiting the 10 minutes, you know, because it's $10 million uh, <laughs> for that extra security. Yeah. But that's, you know, not, it's, it does, it's not a fit for everything. Got it's it. a fit for some things. Definitely for us, we think DeFi, insurance are going to be the most, you know, okay. or those things that don't, don't need a super fa- yeah, high frequency enough. data. Okay. So, so, so that's interesting you said this. I mean, Katie, we talked a fair bit about the tech and thank you. Thank you for that bit. So, and in this, in this conversation that we've been having, you've been obviously throwing the acronym DeFi out there. Just what what is DeFi for though? I mean, I know what it is, but and I'm not testing you. But what is it for our viewers who don't really understand what DeFi is, just at a high level? Yeah. So decentralized uh, finance mm-hmm. in general, at least to me, it's just um, I guess decentralized finance. That's really clear. Um, more, uh, for me, it's like products like the derivatives, mm-hmm. uh, f- futures, okay. options. If you should I describe those. So mm-hmm. a derivative yep, yep. is basically a product where um, you say, I will pay you um, X based on the change of Y mm-hmm. from period A to period yep. B. And then, you know, you get some, you know, um, based on the change, then you get either the difference or paid the loss, out the difference, yep. depending yep. if you're shorting mm-hmm. or longing something. Exactly. Okay. Uh, so it's uh, those types of products that enable mm-hmm. uh, some risk mitigation and others. I mean, they, people just use them also to just, you know, make money. But <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you want to make <laughs> this money, is right? Great. <laughs> yeah, which is great. But like originally they went yeah. for risk mitigation purposes and now we've just learned to leverage them mm-hmm. to actually just make money out of them. So, Let's 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 talk about adoption here then, right? Because obviously, DeFi is quite large in terms of the breadth of you know there are very there are various aspects of decentralized finance that you could be aiming for. So, what what verticals are you currently aiming for initially? So initially, uh, you know, derivatives, stable coins. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't see a lot of insurance yet jumping in, but I hope that they do eventually. I think that would be a really good. I've, uh, I've... I've always found insurance companies generally to be lagging in in most industries across most things in general. Um, like certainly in here in the UK, I can you know there's, there's a couple of companies that I was uh, sort of asked to do a bit of work for, and and they certainly weren't up to par with sort of digital transformation in general. So I always think insurance is always uh, lagged behind, and then you have got government and all the other areas that go with it. Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely for us, our futures, options, stable coins. Um, that that's sh- that's mm-hmm. what we want to focus on right now. I know stable coins are a big deal right now. We would, you know, so that's generally what we want to okay. focus on. It's mm-hmm. like onboarding those projects that are building these types of okay. of products. Mm-hmm. So adoption projects building these products. There's always a point in this space where you're potentially competing with somebody or you're in the same space as somebody else, right? And to me, Chainlink comes to mind as a potential product or project, should I say, that feels like it operates in the same space as Teller. So do they operate in the same space as Teller? And if they do, what is it that you guys are doing slightly differently that maybe gives you your unique selling point? Yeah, well, one of the, the main thing for us is that we're very, very, very pragmatic in our mm-hmm. approach. Uh, we're using proof of work and staking mechanism and incentives, just mm-hmm. general incentives and game theory to be able to provide a solution that works right now. Okay. Um, it is lower, so we are focusing on security and not speed, and we're also focusing on numeric values right mm-hmm. now. Uh, the difference, and, and but it works now. Like we're on audits, and we plan to launch by the end of the summer on maintenance. Okay. Um, Chainlink, it's a great project. Uh, we've actually been following them because you know, for our derivatives mm-hmm. uh, yep. uh, uh, 
protocol. Uh, but they're trying to enable, en enable instantaneous access to all sorts of data types mm -hmm. um, off from off chain. And what that means to us, I mean, one, it's very hard. And two, um, you know, once they solve this, it's going to be really great. But that just means that they would have solved scalability, option computation, privacy. Mm -hmm. And to solve, I mean, that's a monster of a research project um, that we don't think it's going to be solved as quickly okay. as we all want to solve mm -hmm. them. Yeah. I mean, we all want the space to grow and we all want these things to be solved, but it's going to take a longer time. And although we're not as, um, I guess, uh, open as in like all mm -hmm. sorts of data types, and we're, we're very focused on numeric data and, you know, security okay. rather than um, speed or uh, scalability. Okay. Oh. Um, Fine. Well, Next question, really, and I'm going to kind of move away from the project as in terms of the tech and want to say thank you for going through all of those. Let's talk a bit about in terms of your team partners and, and sort of goals. So obviously, we know what you were doing outside of Teller, but I'm curious how you became the co-founder. I mean, what did you do before you sort of got into this? What, what were you doing in terms of work wise? Yeah, so I actually am an economist by training, and I was an economist with the U.S. Bureau of Labor, uh, mm -hmm. Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, for many years. And um, I actually, like about eight years ago, I met Nick Fed. That's our, that's the CTO currently. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and he uh, he actually went to the CFTC, and he ended up regulating cryptocurrencies, and that's how he got the idea of the derivatives protocol. Mm -hmm. And then um, last, you know, last year um, he caught because I, you know, I, I started like I really like tech, so mm -hmm. I started like diving into blockchains yeah. and coding more than you know just like the current the cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. But then he called me up and he's like, "Hey, you know, I'm building this, you know, join me." And so I literally left my cushy government job <laughs> and said like why not you know what what could happen you know <laughs> and uh we just like literally like went to the i don't know you know like we just jump off um we have i haven't we have another co-founder mike mm -hmm. and and another dev mike uh i collect mics apparently but <laughs> okay, uh <yeah. laughs> <laughs> they, uh, we met them at different meetups in the mm -hmm, DC area. Mm -hmm. We're all based in the DC area. Okay. And Mike Semrose, he used to be a startup consultant, and okay. he does a lot of like he brings a lot of the design mm -hmm. and marketing skill sets yep. that you know we as a con oh, oh Nick also studied economics, so we both went to Hopkins. So okay. as economists, we were like we really need a marketing, you know, somebody mm -hmm. to round us up. Yeah. Uh, yep. We're very te we're we're. we're both technical co-founders, yeah. but mm -hmm. Mike kind of like makes it, you know, normal <laughs> marketing. Design, <laughs> yeah, you got the whole like, business, the business development yeah. element that kind of goes with it, right? Okay, yeah. I'm with you. And then uh, Mike Kuhn, he actually worked for the NSA for about twenty years, mm -hmm. and then he also like went from the NSA to like crypto hacker. Okay. And he's, you know, just the enterprise level software development okay. experience that he has. Mm -hmm. He just. That's how we all ended up together. But yeah. we all started working in the, the Rebus protocol, mm -hmm. right? And then we like, you know, we build everything is great. And then it's like, what? I'm like, um, <laughs> okay, so let's go back to the drawing board. And then we end up with Teller because mm -hmm. we're like, okay, we can't really move forward or we can't yeah. push this any farther until this is solved. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it, it, we were hoping somebody had solved it by the time we got there, but... It didn't well, happen, so it's, I it's, guess it's, we it's, just it's, had to well, do there it. You go. It's, it's a good thing somebody has it. It puts you in a nice little <laughs> space as well and, uh, you know, keeps you yeah. in a job, right? So, <laughs> so that's Yeah, no, happy. absolutely. Well, the good thing is you've got all your hair, unlike me, so clearly you guys are doing something good. <laughs> so the, the, the other thing I was going to mention, actually, um, and I've seen uh, a few posts, a few podcasts, and I'm curious, what is the relationship you have with Daxia? Because that's another project, right? Because it, it, seems, right. it seems like you both go hand in hand almost. So DAX is actually our derivatives protocol. Okay. Or was. Uh, we're actually shutting it down. Um, mm -hmm. We've been really focused on Teller since we got into Binance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we just, it, we're, we're going to shut it down. I, I think that uh, now we have our hands full with mm -hmm. the Oracle problem. Yeah. Uh, so that that's our relationship with it. Um, we, okay. you know, we enjoyed developing it. We enjoyed learning a lot about um, what users needed within mm -hmm. the DeFi space because we were in it. 
Um, but I think now we're, you know, our focus has shifted and okay. yeah, we're enjoying it. I mean, so, and, and we really think that this is absolutely needed for mm -hmm. DeFi to actually to move forward. Okay. So it's, you know, it's still in our, in our realm. Fair enough. So interesting that you mentioned on it a couple of minutes ago, and I'm sure all the viewers of this YouTube say, Binance, 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 but we'll get into Binance in a minute. <laughs> so, I mean, just in terms of Teller as the organization, I mean, are there any other partners that have come on the journey with you? Any other advisors that have come on the journey with you? Don't mention Binance yet, though. We'll talk about that in a bit. I'm just curious about everybody else around it. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, but this is the thing, right? Uh, right? Teller is only been in existence since March. Okay. So um, we, you know, all of our, and I'm going to have to say Binance because mm. they're really, uh, their network and yep. their mentors, that's been really who we've been talking oh. to, mm -hmm, to like mm -hmm, get mm -hmm. this uh, fully developed and off to audit. Yep. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I have to so, say Well, 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 you know what, you've said it enough <laughs> times already, <laughs> about four or five if I'm counting. So let's, let's talk about Binance Labs. Um, I, I personally haven't spoken with any projects that have worked with Binance Labs or helped incubate. Mm -hmm. A project so i'm curious what's what's your what's your experience uh, like how, how did they approach you i mean did you pitch to them did they sort of see a picture of you guys somewhere i mean how, how did how did it all come about for us to be honest we we, uh, we applied on their website mm -hmm. they have a uh, finance incubation labs uh website and we applied mm -hmm. and we filled out all of the questionnaire and then they had us go through uh three rounds of interviews mm -hmm. and then literally a week before we had to be in berlin at 5 a.m in the morning i wake up grab my phone and i'm like holy shit <laughs> great now i can't monetize this video thank you very much <laughs> so sorry. it's cool carry on <laughs> i was like we have to be in berlin uh, next week uh, but it was really exciting i was just like i was texting our co-founders like at 5 a.m in the morning i was like wake up um but that's pretty much how it happened. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. it was a very uh, normal process. You apply, yep. do interviews. Uh, you on every interview, you, you pitch your, pro mm -hmm, your product, mm -hmm. and then you just cross your fingers. And you know, I we believe in the product. We were yep. still gonna develop it anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we it really, uh, I, I think, it really gave us a, a lot more confidence. Yep. It's like, okay, this is you know, great. Any allowed us to really, really focus on building like the last 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. We just finished in June 7th was okay. our uh, build, builder's day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you have like a, a pitch day. Um, but 10 weeks, like the first six weeks was just building, 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 building. I mean, we went from, uh, we developed a full, full DAP okay. for interacting with our smart contracts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Our smart contracts are off to audit and we launched to Rinkeby. Like that was wow. just okay. like, we were working so much. <laughs> and then the last three weeks, it was in San Francisco mm -hmm. where they had um, like investors would come in and, yeah. and we would pitch to them mm -hmm. uh, in person. Mm -hmm. Like we would get 10 minutes with them and just uh, go through our product and they would uh, help us improve our pitch and also take notes on it. And then, you know, have follow up wow. meetups, which was great. Mm. And then on the builder's day, it's basically just pitch day. You just, everybody pitches and then there's a bunch of uh, VCs. Mm -hmm. And then it's, um, you know, just talking to them and continuing talks with them and then hopefully closing out our round very soon. So they really provided a lot of a network uh, when we were building. Mm -hmm. Like we got to sit with, uh, we were in Berlin, we we're in the same office as Cosmos and um, Grin. All right. Okay. okay. So it was great. Like we actually, well, yeah. Mm. yeah, really good projects that they got to like, we got to talk to them about our project and our incentives mechanism mm -hmm. and how we were designing it and structuring the tokenomics of it. So it was really great to like talk to these, you know, what we consider mm. to be like really successful pro projects where really, they were really well done and just getting their input, yeah. you know, getting their yeah. feedback and, and working through, through our own design. Mm. So I don't, you know, I don't think that we would have done this had we just been, you know, not in Binance Lab. Yeah. Uh, okay. Also, just to get their time, like a lot of these people, um, you know, they're very busy. Yeah. So yeah. it's nice uh, that those introductions that they provide are very, very nice because they're willing to give us the time. Excellent. Wow, that's uh, it's always good to hear. Plus, like you said, that they've had the experience, they can certainly help you in those areas that you need additional help and 
see what they've kind of seen it all before gaps etc okay so let's let's i mean and, and you touched on it earlier around um almost being ready for development deployment sort of test net mainnet all that great mm-hmm. stuff so let's talk a bit about your roadmap actually what what milestones do you have coming up which us as the community should be really excited about they should be really excited about our mainnet launch um we are already in the audit we got this week we got our initial uh, set of comments mm-hmm, from Circuit, mm-hmm. and they were pretty good. Uh, so nothing, nothing that seemed that we would be reworking, you know, anything greatly. So, you know, it goes through iterations the way the audits go. Like we just, you know, this is their first round. We'll fix it and then they'll give us more comments. And we were hoping to just be done by the end of the mm-hmm. summer. And then once we launch, um, you know, our community, you know, we're really excited for them because uh, we're going to need miners. So yeah. hopefully they'll, they'll reach out and uh, they'll be as interested uh, to mine as they are in, in, in just, you know, finding more about our, pro- our product. Um, so that so that's interesting. You mentioned that actually because um, it, it was around. So th- there is no, I mean, this is, this is like a no pre-mine project. And so what that means is that you're not pre-minting tokens whatsoever up front. It, it is you need to mine in order to solve the challenge in order to then to get the to get the reward so does that mean from day one of your network launch that individuals can just start mining so it won't be from day one because stakes uh miners have to be staked Mm -hmm. so it's like a chicken and egg thing because we need to have you know we need to we're we're gonna do um five miners that we're gonna stake and we're gonna be running and then um, as we grow, you know, we, we want to ensure that we grow a, a healthy supply of tokens before we start distributing mm-hmm. them just to maintain security. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we'll have a few miners and then approach us and we'll probably know the very first ones just because, you know, we're probably going to give them the initial stake. Mm-hmm. And then uh, once there's enough supply out there in the wild for sale, then anybody can, can start joining. Okay. Um, but in general, you know, because... We start with zero supply and yep. the first day we'll be minting about currently as, as our structured design works about 3,900. Okay. So even if we wanted to, oh, that's not like, much at all then it's quite a, that's really not a, supply. yeah, that's not it's a nothing. lot of tokens. Okay. So mm-hmm. it's going to be, you know, it, it's going to take a little bit mm-hmm. to build up to it. So okay. day one, no, but okay. definitely, you know, as, as soon as we have mm-hmm. the supply and, and, you know, we, 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 that's our, our roadmap end of the summer so okay. if people start reaching out to us now that would be yeah. great <laughs> that's right yeah yeah jump on guys yeah. jump on now to become a miner and earn so yeah and it, it we mentioned tokens and obviously people are thinking hey <laughs> when do i get a piece of the pie right because there's uh, as always when i interview there i always see two elements to a community there are those who are speculative and want to get rich mm-hmm naturally and there's nothing wrong with that and there are those who support the tech and want to see DeFi become bigger and better and greater and certainly in the space that you're operating so (laughs) viewers are going to be asking why isn't he talking about fundraising when is the ieo um (laughs) there isn't an (coughs) ieo right (laughs) it's the anticlimax it's a good thing we left it towards the end so my understanding is that there 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 isn't an ieo um in terms of launch so not in terms of a launch especially not in terms of a plan a uh, we're, we're doing a developer's share, okay. and what that means is uh, every time that we mint tokens and pay out the miners, we also get a, a 10% mm-hmm. dev share for Teller. Okay. Um, we're actually sending it to a multi-stick wallet that it's going to be controlled by Teller. Mm-hmm. It's not actually owned by any of the founders. Our, you know, none of, the, of our equity is actually tied to the dev share. Okay. Our raise, however, is tied to the dev share. We can, uh, we can talk about it if you want to okay. talk about the race. Um, but, um, All right. So j- just so those who don't who don't understand um, what, a, what a dev share is, because you obviously mentioned raise. You've mentioned that you're raising through, we'll say VCs for now. I mean, you know, that's right. what you naturally have. And then you've also got a dev share element. So just, just so viewers understand, there isn't an IEO, okay? You've kind of already raised what you need or are raising what you need in order to kickstart and go, okay? Um, And then from that element, really, the kind of way to be able to earn tokens ultimately within within Teller is to be a miner. um, And then, Mm. and I'm just sort of interpreting what the dev share is. And then, so from there, I mine, um, I get rewarded and 10% of that reward then goes to, then goes to Teller. Now, it's an interesting model. I've I've seen it in the past as well. Mm. And- 
before I sort of, I mean, I suppose my question is, and I and I have seen sort of various articles where potentially projects struggle with funding with a dev share model. So how, how do you, how do you sustain that? Yeah, I mean, anytime you start with a dev share model, it's always very tight at the beginning mm-hmm. because you don't have, you know, that a lot of value in the ecosystem. Yeah. So you have yeah. to still build it. Uh, but it does, on the other hand, um, aligns the incentives, you know, because mm-hmm. now it's, we are very incentivized to make sure that we continue to grow our community and our ecosystem and mm-hmm. continue to, you know, just be as transparent as possible and good and at delivering our product. Okay. Um, the opposite is true with ICOs. I mean, they get the money out yeah. front, which is great. But, you know, um, for us, we just thought, you know, uh, the dev share for some projects um, can enable a sustainable and valuable network, you know, mm-hmm. for the long term. Okay. Um, okay. And that's what we want to build. Um, right. yeah. So interesting you mentioned long term, you know, for any project in my opinion my opinion um to kind of progress and succeed uh, community is a very strong part of all projects right um i won't name any names but there are certain projects that you know i've seen recently come about and <laughs> and the community can absolutely trash it uh, based on that so community is very important um for all projects yeah. and you know so so what does what does community actually mean for you what, what does having a community mean for you it's uh, for me it's it's having um a, a community that aligns with our values. Mm-hmm. Um, we are obviously, I mean, and granted, with our backgrounds, you would never assume that we are so uh, pro decentralization, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. but we are, and it's it's part of our values. Uh, providing that freedom to have unstoppable applications out there, it's mm-hmm. very important to us. And trying to enable the space to get there, it's mm-hmm. something at our core, and. In terms of our community, I mean, we see them as, you know, one, um, if they align with our values and, you know, two, um, they're part of our outreach. You know, they're, they're, they're the ones that can, you know, tell people that we mm-hmm. exist and uh, increase the awareness just ab- about us and what we're trying to build. And that, you know, that's, that yeah. ecosystem really is what, you know, we consider our community. Excellent. Well, I always love it when someone loves the community. So uh, I think on that note, yeah. this was a wonderful interview. Um, I've been, I've clearly found out more about Teller than I didn't know before. And I really like the fact that clearly you're giving back to the community and I love that whole project. So Brenda, thank you so much for taking us through what Teller is. And before we wrap up this interview, how do we stay up to date? Where do we need to go to find the latest and the greatest about Teller? This is your <laughs> opportunity to sell it now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, one, uh, we're super active on Telegram. So mm-hmm. if you want to join our Teller Telegram, um, that's a great place to start. Des- we description have a- in the uh, below. Don't worry, you don't need to read it out. I'll put the descriptions in the links in below. So check out the description below, and subscribe awesome. to the channel. <laughs> yes, yeah, subscribe to the channel, um, and uh, follow us on Twitter. Um, mm-hmm. To be honest, Telegram is is what we really uh, interact a lot okay. with. But we always check our our Twitter. Um, we and. So yeah, just join us you, there. You've also got a Discord, the, right? There's a is there a Discord? We have a Discord. Yeah, a Discord yes, well, we have a Discord there, yeah. with specific. We actually have a channel there for miners. Okay. Um, and a little bit more technical stuff. Mm. Um, on the Telegram, we do a lot of the news and a lot yeah. of like every time that we publish a paper and you know any question that yeah. anybody asks, mm-hmm. it, it just goes through there too. So we check all of the chan- the, the Discord, okay. the Telegram. Um, we even have um, LinkedIn. Um, we, we're I feel that the, the just in general, the crypto community is not as active on LinkedIn. No, but we, I, we do I, have it. Yeah. <laughs> I've I've seen you a few times, and generally, yeah. even from my own personal experience, I haven't really seen much in terms no. of crypto activity. But we do thing. have it, yeah. so mm. no, well, it's there. No, exactly, there. exactly. <laughs> we can make sure you're real, and you guys do have a job, and you work for who you say you work for. So that's what I find LinkedIn pretty much good for in tw- in uh, crypto space nowadays. Well, look, Brenda, once again, thank you so much for your time. Um, really appreciate you taking us through Teller and especially me having the exclusivity here to be able to interview you guys first before everybody else and then before all the other bigger YouTubers come in and say, I want a piece of Brenda time. So thank you so much. And um, look, uh, I'm going to stay in touch and clearly hopefully try and get another update out of you post your launch and kind of see where you guys are in that space as well. So Brenda, thank you. Speak to you soon. Thank you, Firas. Thank you for having me. That's all right. See you later.
See you later.